All right. Hi, we're live. Yes, we are finally live here at Urban Conservative Forum. What is it? Um, Urban Conservative of America. Yeah. So Patrick and I, this is the first time we are uh, we are new to the Urban Conservatives of America. We're super excited to be a part of this great movement. Um, I am thrilled, and I'm thrilled to be partnered with Patrick because. Um, and you do you you are doing a lot called pa Patrick um, perspective, and yes. it's absolutely wonderful. So just know that we're going live together and on Sundays at seven pm um, Central. And this is just such I mean, what it's so wonderful. And I'm super excited, Patrick, to be a part of this with you. Hi, right, I'm glad to meet you, and I'm I'm looking forward to what uh, God has in store for us in the future. Absolutely. All right. So you're going to start us with prayer. We de we decided to start, you know, wish us luck and God bless yes. us. And so let's yes. start one of, this. One of the things about the, the conservative movement, there are a lot of movements out there and they're all great. Uh, but one of the things I like about urban conservatives of America is that we put Christ first and we believe <laughs> that uh, we should have respect for God and, and also the Constitution. So I'll lead us in prayer and then we can begin. All right. All right. Father, we just thank you and we bless you here on this Sunday, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful day that you've given uh, both of us here in Tennessee and for Melinda there in New Mexico. Father, we pray, Lord, that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart is acceptable in your sight, Lord. We pray, Lord, that every word that is said will be able to edify and uh, encourage someone, Lord, to join this conservative movement, Lord, as we pray for our country and we bless our country. We thank you for what you've done for us. We thank you for our president, President Trump. I ask that you continue to protect him. I ask that you continue to guide him so that he may lead this nation to the place where you have for us. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, that was beautiful. Thank you, Patrick. And just like you said, we are here and we are praying for our amazing president um, who truly is putting his, you know, his whole life in front of ours, he and right. his family. Um, and I know I feel very thankful and all of my fellow Trump supporters that I speak to are truly thankful because we can only imagine what that's like, right? I mean, right. I don't know about you, Patrick, but for myself being on a smaller scale and the pushback that I get, there's a mm -hmm. lot and you can really get consumed in some of it and you really have to, you know, move back and get back into prayer and and know mm -hmm. that it is, it is this is God that's opening the doors and giving us the voice and the right words. And um, I pray a lot about it, too. Lord, give me all of the right things to say when I'm trying to um, do my part in the country is how I feel. This is what I'm doing. I, I didn't go and serve in the military, but I feel like in these times, in this moment, that this is how I can give back. If I have the knowledge, if I can share it, if I have the voice and I have the want and the will, and this is what, what I want to do. Right. And that's that's basically civic engagement. When you study our uh, found, founding fathers, mm -hmm. uh, this is the same heart that they had when they founded this nation. They wanted people to be engaged. They wanted people to be aware of what's going on around them and even the politics of how to get things done and how to move the needle and, you know, how to be fluid as the country grows. So um, I always think about that. That was one of the things that really um, intrigued me as I began to study conservatism uh, of how much the founding fathers were just enlightened on different subjects. And so, right. and I think that's what we're doing. We're enlightening people or, or what we call today, awakening people. Mm -hmm. We're awakening them to how great our country really is when we take the time to look at it. Absolutely. And, I, and as we spoke last night when, um, and what I tell people, I, we feel like even though we don't, it, we're not reaching some, the hope is to plant the seeds, right? Right. The hope right. is to plant the seeds and then we'll just keep watering them and watering them. And right. essentially at a different point in time in their lives or maybe an event happens or whatever the case is, right. that seed is going to, you know, is going to open up and they're going to be like, aha, okay, well, now I see what we're talking about. Now I see. Right. And, and, I, and I think now it, there's so much division. There's so much fighting. There's so much chaos. And right. I feel like that's what the devil wants. And mm -hmm. to me, when I see 
the Democratic Party, like they're almost initiating that. They're not yeah. calling for unity. Um, the, you know, we can clearly see the obstacles and the obstruction that's happening that's really, mm -hmm. and especially with the media. I blame right. the media a thousand percent for the division, for the confusion, for the misinformation um, that they're, deli you know, they're, they're they're deliberately doing that, right. and, that, and, that it, and it's sad. And I call the I call the media basically the fourth branch of government because they have so much influence, um, and they are able to really program people to to believe certain things that are just simply not true. And yes. so that's why you know it's very important that conservatives now begin to use platforms like this that we're able to. Uh, put our perspective out there, the conservative perspective, yes. and not just, you know, accept what the liberal media has given us. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and for a lot of us, I feel like we've surpassed the critical thinking part. And that's why many of us that went from Democrat, because I was always Democrat. Um, right. And I voted, you know, Democrat growing up, up until Donald Trump. And really? so I- you're, Hold on. So your whole, so your family pretty much- was was Democrat? Is that that's you, that's where you came from? Yes. Yeah, so a little background: my my mother being Hispanic, um, mm -hmm. and and Catholic, and my stepdad, who is my dad, he's raised me since I was a year old. He's own, you know, he's my dad. He's actually from Kashmir, so he's Muslim. And wow. so you can imagine, for me, the backlash and the in the frustration, um, but. In the very beginning, I didn't have many of my family members, even my three millennial daughters, that saw what I saw or heard what I heard. They were uh, almost running with the masses, you know, with, oh, my God, he seems racist or uh, they don't like his tone. Because, again, from the guys from New York and I was in New York and I met, you know, Donald Trump. They, they come a dime a dozen, the way they speak, the way they walk, the way they talk. Um, yeah. They come a dime a dozen. Uh, real quick, I don't want to miss uh, the, the question here. Why did you vote Democrat? I voted. I voted Democrat, to be honest with you, the same rhetoric because we were raised. It was like, you know, you're his, I'm Hispanic. It's like time stamped on my birth certificate that I will be voting Democrat. Mm -hmm. And so we were just raised that way and always told that the Democrats are for the poor and right. for the minorities. And that Republicans only want to continue to enrich the rich. They're for the rich. And they're only going to work towards enriching them. And literally, I can think back about that mentality. And I'm still mm -hmm. blown away. because, And for Donald Trump, like when you were asking me, for me, it was, I knew that these career politicians were literally doing nothing for us. Mm -hmm. It was the same old promises with no actions and the promises. And you could see it. And with and I and I remember saying we need a businessman because the president is just like the CEO of the country, he's the CEO wow. of the business. That's that's really what he stands for. Wow. And I said, can you imagine just a, a businessman, somebody who's good with money to get us out of debt? And when he ran, when he announced his uh, candidacy, I was I told my husband, I'm. I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. He's a businessman. He's built a world brand name. I feel right. like we we need that kind of insight. Literally, it was the business side that I saw right. in his, you know, his, he, you could tell he was just very straightforward. For me, mm -hmm. I was like, that's cool. I, I, I want straightforward. I want to, I don't want sugar coated, silver tongue lining, beautiful words that make you feel warm and fuzzy inside, yet you don't see any work. You don't see any progress. Right. So that, that was, that's what it was for me. And, what about you? And see, for me, um, it's pretty much, I didn't really know a lot about politics uh, growing up. My father was always a pastor, uh, but we never really talked about politics. I just knew that as a, I don't know where I, like, where I learned this from, but I just knew as a <laughs> black person, I was supposed to vote for Dem Donald, I mean, for Democrats because <laughs> I, um, I checked black on all of my papers. So mm. black and Democrat was actually the same in my community. And so it wasn't until around 2000, I actually, the first time I voted I was in the year 2000 mm -hmm. and I voted for George Bush. Wow. Well, actually this, well, I went to go and vote in the primary and they automatically gave me a Democrat ballot. Like I was like, <laughs> how do you know that I'm a Democrat though? She was like, well, I guess, 
I just assume you're a Democrat. And they gave it to me. And I was like, I don't want this. I want the other. I was kind of a rebel then. I'm still a yeah. rebel. But yeah. <laughs> I, I said, give me the other one. Just because you thought I was going to give me the other one. And I took the other one. And then I realized that it was nothing but like George Bush on there. So I was like, okay, I'm voting okay. for George Bush. I got to vote and for I him. I voted for George Bush in the primary. And I went home and I told my parents. I was 20 years old. And I told my parents. And it was like, I had, you would have thought I killed someone. Oh my God. And so and my, my father said this to me. He said, your grandfather would roll over in his grave if he knew you voted for, for a Republican. Oh. That started and peaked my journey of finding out what does it really mean to be a Republican and what is a Democrat. And right. from there, right. you know, I've just blossomed into who I am today as a Christian conservative. That's wonderful. And that's what, I, and you know, for, so for, for many of us, it was different reasons. It was different timing. It was different. You know, it, it could be maybe they didn't like him the first year, but I feel like the Democratic Party and the the, the news media, essentially, they're going to expose themselves. However, it may happen miraculously for different for everybody. For my mother, my mother mm -hmm. being, a, a, you know, just a strong Catholic woman in southern New Mexico, it, she really didn't like him. She disliked him very much. It sure. was, my mom doesn't watch the news. She watches EWTN all day mm -hmm. long, right? Sure. So she calls me crying and she uh, FaceTimed me and she was crying and she was running around her room and she was showing the on TV. She said, Trump is the first president to be at, you know, the, uh, to save the children for the abortion. Um, sure. And she was crying because my mom is, the, being the big Catholic woman that she is, abortion was never an option. It was never a question. And being Hispanic, those are not our values. Right. And um, it was that moment when she mm -hmm. saw the first president at the march, you know, for the babies, mm -hmm. she cried and she cried and she cried. And she, now she's going to vote for the president that's saving the the innocent babies. So oh, wow. it's going to be different, you know, for everybody. And up yeah. to that point, she literally um, was so angry at him. And I, you know, but she, she would listen to me and we, you know, we were able to have a conversation, but she couldn't bring herself because of everything that she was hearing and listening and whatnot in Southern New Mexico, she couldn't do it. But it was that moment that she wow. said that she will, she wants to, to vote for the president, the first president that is going to save the, the innocent babies from being wow. aborted. Wow, and see, and, and see, and it's amazing because, I mean, me and you are here right now talking about this, but like, we're not supposed to be here according to the media and according to, no. you know, all of the pundits, like you're not supposed to have an Hispanic woman no. and a <laughs> black man that is supporting a Republican president or Donald Trump for the matter. And so, Especially and Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I like what you said. You said all of us come to this at a different place mm -hmm. and are, there are different issues that bring us together. And different and reasons. I go all, yeah, I can go all the way back because in the black community, the truth is most uh, black people are actually conservative. They have conservative traditional values. That and they so are Hispanics. In. See, and, and so it's kind of like we, we're, we've we always been conservative, but um, it's kind of like we don't know that we're conservative. So a certain issue has to bring that yes. out. And yes. it, it was abortion for, for your mother. But for me, I can remember, I can remember all the way back in middle school. I can remember because my father came, my father was a banker. So he was recruited here to Tennessee to work at a big bank here, which is SunTrust Bank. Right. And so, so I actually... I couldn't get free lunch because my mm -hmm. father made too much money in school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I began to wonder, I was, and the people would tell me, like, get your parents to sign this form and you can get free lunch. Free and lunch. I taking that form home. And I'm like, dad, hey, if you sign this form, I can get free lunch. Mm -hmm. He was like, no, I give you money to buy lunch. I was like, no, dad, I want free lunch and I want to use the money to buy the extra stuff, the snacks and the <laughs> to ice get, cream. And to get the ice cream things. sandwiches, right? Those right. are my favorite. And so that was like, and then once I, I got to high school and took a government class and found out about taxes, I was like, so hold on there. Are, we are lying about our income so we can get free lunch. But the people that's paying for this are the rich people that I'm supposed to hate. 
And so yes. I began to connect all yes. of those dots. And at that point, I didn't know what conservatism was, but I knew that this was wasting tax dollars. And that so awesome. that kind of, that kind of, when I look back now, that was kind of the, the role that led me to actually becoming a conservative. All the conservative. way back Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is awesome that is such a wonderful story and so you you and like i said it is it's going to happen different for everybody so we have to keep talking and especially because you know that we don't have journalists anymore we don't have good journalism we don't have um news media that just wants to give us the news and right. so i feel like we have to be the warriors out there especially because we're a minority i, I mean i don't know about you patrick but sometimes some people are always telling me, Melinda, when are you going to stop with the identity politics, right? And I right. love that they called this politics identity. And right. I said, I would love to, but unfortunately, until the Democratic Party stops using it against our president or against each other, right. we have to really show that we are a huge army of Americans, yeah. no matter, where. yes, we're minorities, but yeah. we are putting the fact that we are Americans first. We don't right. want to, we don't want to be categorized. Well, they're right. minorities. They're not supposed to. We are here standing strong as Americans and right. saying we support these policies. We right. support these values. And what I tell people, um, as a matter of fact, a young lady that was taking journalism in college in New York messaged me and so she was doing some projects and she asked me she was a latina and so she was asking can i do a story with you because i'm really intrigued and i want to get the you know why many latinos are supporting this president given the racist so you know it was it was a project and one uh -huh. of the questions that she asked me so are there any policies that the that President Trump has put forth that you can say, you know what, I'm not happy with that because they feel that we give him too much credit and they want us to at least list something that we don't like about him. Like it's so right. important to them. They want to know what policies has he done that we don't like. And I said, well, it, here's how I feel about it. And, and, and this is why. I can't be upset or feel that there are any policies that he's putting forward that I don't like because they're our policies. This right. president is actually working for the people and right. he's not forcing things on us like the other ones because either fear mongering because it's a it, right. it's a you know national security issue or whatever the case may be. And she's like, well, I never thought about it that way. And I said, well, because he's actually putting, you know, I, his uh, uh, promises and everything and his policies for the people like everybody else, except he's actually doing them. Right. Wow. He's actually that's, doing them. Yeah. And I mean, and that's why it, it is so important. I know a lot of, a lot of our viewers are watching and probably wondering, and especially those that are like on the fence, I've gotten a couple of messages in the last week of mm -hmm. people that have actually just come over and like, man, you know, you've been consistent. I see what you're saying now. You know, I'm leaving the Democrat Party. And so one of the first things that I want everyone to understand is what conservatism is. And yes. I work it down into basic, you know, four principles. It's basically respect for God and respect for the Constitution. Mm -hmm. That's where everything starts. When you say you are conservative, that means that you are respecting uh, the, the values that the Bible set for. Mm -hmm. And you're also respecting the, uh, the values of our founding fathers. Uh, and that's, that's right. the constitution of freedom and things of that nature. And then you move from that respecting God and respecting the constitution to respecting life, the abortion mm -hmm. issue that mm -hmm. we talked about. And not only the abortion issue, the slavery issue, the first abolitionists were Republican. Why yes. were they Republican? It's because Republicans believe in freedom and they respected all life, no matter what your background was or what your culture was. And so that's the second thing. So you have respect for God and respect for the Constitution. I, I mm -hmm. put those in the same thing. And then you have um, respect for life. And then number three, you have what, what I call limited government, belief in limited government. Yes. And that is saying that government has a sp specific role in our lives, but mm -hmm. it is not to control us. So we right. should believe in limited government, not just socialism like you know we're getting into now and then the last one is belief and personal responsibility mm -hmm. that is what makes a person conservative is that you respect god in the constitution you respect life 
you um you believe in limited government and you believe in personal responsibility right. that is what it means to be a republican i wanted our, or, or a conservative that is what i want our viewers to to understand absolutely and 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 you know what i'm excited about patrick is that we're going to be able to break down a lot more on our shows mm -hmm. on sunday we'll be able to really fine tune what does that mean and right. i would love to also maybe we can do a show i brought it up before and you know we could talk about it because i think a lot of people patrick don't understand the constitution how many right. of how many people have actually read it verbatim right. and understand it uh to be able to decide for what what it means and why our four, four founders you know made it and and also yeah. the bill of rights right i feel like a lot of americans do not understand and 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 especially this young generation um because right. we can we can get into many subjects especially what's happening what we're actually seeing happening in colleges Right. And what are they teaching our children? And it's not, and it shouldn't be conservative or liberal values. It should yeah. just be, you know, the point where you just teach them history. They're trying, right. nowadays are trying to erase history and they're trying to use the emotional uh, of racism, especially in the black community, because they know, right. Patrick, they know they're losing the black community. Right. They know that Hispanics, at a faster rate, know that we're conservative and people like myself, we're gonna, so we're, you know, we're, it, it's a it's a lot faster, but they know that they're, they're losing us. And right. when people say get rid of the identity politics, we can't yet, trust me, we right. would love nothing more. And I have a feeling maybe after he wins the second term without having to hear that he only run because of the Russians, Right. Um, which I, I mean, I missed my email from Vladimir Putin that I, it was very valid to vote for Trump. So I don't even right. know where that came from, right. <laughs> you know, talking to us, like we're ignorant and we have right. to believe that it was the Russians when we, and the thing is, Patrick, is that we know how strong we are. We're right. in these pages. We're speaking to other conservatives. So we know that the minority race and support for this president is huge and it is mm -hmm. large. And it right. is so frustrating when they try to say otherwise. Right. And see, and that's why I've always said that eight years of Obama was even even though it was a horrible eight years that we went through, it actually helped the conservative movement because yeah. we actually have now we have eight years of quantifiable data from having a black minority democrat president all right we know now for eight years what he did for the minorities we know that he didn't do anything for the black community and, and when you ask people in the black community well what did obama do and they'll tell you well he really couldn't do anything because <laughs> You know, he didn't want to, you know, stir the pot or he didn't want to do any of that. I was like, no, I said he didn't do anything because Barack Obama really never grew up black. He his mother was um, was white and his father white. was African. He never really grew up in black culture, even no. though we projected it onto him as the first black president. He never lived what we lived. He went to an Ivy League school and, and all of that. And so I think now that is one of the main points that I drive home with Trump. We now have at least three years of things that Trump has actually done for yes. the black community. I and we have to, to fight that. for it. I mean, we have to yeah. fight because they don't want to believe it. They, no, no, no. Because the Democrat and the media are so busy putting and, and, and deriving them from the truth, which especially with the media, I get so frustrated because mm -hmm. if only they would put the right information out there, you and I know, Patrick, that more people would be on the, in the same page as us. And mm -hmm. I ask many people that are more liberal, do you, what is it? Why, why are your views so different from mine? Why is your information so different? Why is why am I looking at all so many positive things and you are looking at death and destruction? Right. Why right. is that? And it, it, and it can it can be information coming from this the very same news briefing. Right. And they're getting death and destruction, and we're getting positivity and hopefulness. Right. And see, and that, I, those are. I want to be under that umbrella. I want to be happy right. and hopeful. <laughs> And see, and, the, and those are the things that we, we will be able to, to really discuss because you basically just have two visions for America. You have, 
you know, one vision where they want, you know, us enslaved to the government and the government, you know, giving us everything, socialism, and then you have capitalism. And that's the thing. If you go and you look at all of the countries that have implemented socialism, socialism, mm -hmm. it is a, an utter mess in those yeah. countries. And when you look at those countries that have uh, been, you know, uh, promoting capitalism, if you look at it, we're not fighting each other or conquering or conquesting each other uh, over land anymore. We're not right. doing that. Why? Because of capitalism. We learn mm -hmm. to trade. We learn to, you know, um, sell sugar cane, sell tobacco. So we are able to do that. And so that's what capitalism did. We're not killing right. each other off right. because of capitalism. And I think more platforms like this is needed so we can teach people the basic principles of conservatism and capitalism. And it and like the Constitution, like you said, teaching them the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. And it helps people understand why our nation is so different from the rest. Absolutely. And we have to, and here's the other thing. It, it Doesn't it feel like we're constantly have not only our president, but we're jumping over those obstacles that the gyms and the media throw mm -hmm. out because like what, what you just spoke on about mm -hmm. socialism, there right. are actually Americans in our country that are fighting for Bernie Sanders. And when right. you try to show them the facts and the truth behind like Venezuela and Cuba, oh, but it's not, the Democrats have them believing that it's not the same socialism. Right. And it's like, oh, there, you mean there's multifaceted, you know, different ways of socialism? I mean, right. it's either socialism or it's capitalism. It's one or right. the other. And so, and but they, they do it so well. And they right. really and make them think that, oh, it's not, we're not going to be like Venezuela. I, right. <laughs> Well, we don't want to. People, <laughs> we don't want to go there. The time that, uh, you know, communism and socialism. The only difference between the two is one is holding a gun to your head, and the other yes. isn't. That's the only difference. Right. And so they're they're wanting us to choose it, and I even believe what we're going through now, even with, you know, uh, this COVID situation and this mm -hmm. this virus, it is actually a practice run on the American people to see how much we will tolerate. That's right. why it's important for us to speak up for our rights. It's important for churches to go to the Supreme Court if they have to and say, hey, we Absolutely. have the right to assemble. We have the right. Our, our, our First Amendment gives us that right to assemble. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a great opportunity to even teach churches and Christians mm -hmm. how important it is to live in a country that has a constitution that protects them. And another thing, just like Patrick said, you know, we, we, we are here and we are working hard and we're like the, the journalists and the activists and, ev and you know, every journalist. <laughs> I never <laughs> thought I would be writing. I never thought I would be on a camera, like explaining no. principles to people. But like you said, we don't have journalists anymore. We so don't. Here, here we are. And so, and if we have a voice, because I would, I did a live video one time and I'm like, look, all of my friends, all of my family that I lost when I said I supported Trump and we were like this, we were so close. I didn't change. I didn't become this crazy psycho person overnight just because right. my political views are different than yours. Or maybe I heard him say something that wasn't racist and right. you heard it was racist, but I didn't hear that it was racist because here's my perspective on mm -hmm. why I didn't hear racism. Well, we couldn't even get there. Like we can't have right. those conversations. And I try to tell people, I didn't turn into this crazy person, this psychomaniac overnight. Right. So yeah. why are we now fighting each other that that's who we are? So we have to be voices. We have to reel people back into reality and say, look, we are very, we're sane people, but just have a different perspective. And, um, you know, and speaking to that, one of my good friends out in Los Angeles, she's not a big fan of Trump either. You know, she's just mm -hmm. not, but she's, I love her so much. But one day, finally, wasn't too long ago, I saw her put in her stories. Um, why is it, I heard, um, uh, oh, she goes, I was watching a, a news station and it just made President Trump looks so horrible, bad lie, bad, bad, bad. She goes, and then yeah. I went to another news station and it was like this nice, nice story. And it was the same news briefing, like right. what I was saying. That's why, I'm, I, why I brought it up. And she says, just give us the news, peeps. Just give us yeah. the news and let us figure it out for ourselves. Yeah. So now for her, and I finally came in and, you know, because I love her so much and I don't, I never try to get too much political with her, but yeah. I said, unfortunately, sweetheart, this has been happening. Like what you're watching 
it's literally been happening for the past four years. And this right. is what we've been screaming and what we're trying to make people realize, like, I don't, I, you know, I try to, I try to say to different sin structures, but why are we so divided when we're looking at the exact same thing? Right. Like, come on. And, and I, I tell people, and I'm actually doing a show on, on the, the Patrick perspective show on this coming Friday, I'm going to be talking about uh, media literacy. The, mm -hmm. One of the greatest skills mm -hmm. that I learned as an adult was how to interpret media and right. how media messages are made. To be mm -hmm. honest, I, and I actually believe that all of us that are conservative actually picked up this skill somewhere along the way where we're able to look at a media message and say, hold on now, you know, that can't be, you know, entirely true. And so we learned to question what was being told to us. Right. And that was actually the beginning of our awakening is that mm -hmm. we started to question things. Everything. And like a critical thinker to the left is actually a conspiracy theorist and all we're doing is critically thinking about what's being put before us exactly and 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 you're right and that's what we do we ask questions and if you go look at my post a lot of it is literally like in a question form because i also mm -hmm. feel that when you plant the seed in a question it can't be, you know, perceived in any other way. It can't be perceived yeah. bad or, or good because it's a question. It's it's an open right. question. And now it's left for you. And, and I always end it. Look, guys, go do your research. Don't don't take my word for it. Go, you know, go research it for yourself because right. it makes more sense and it has more meaning when mm -hmm. when it makes when, when you understand it, you know. Right. That's what's important when they get mm -hmm. to that point. And mm -hmm. then like one gentleman, when we were talking about it, which is going to be a whole different story, but we were talking about what's happening in uh, Hollywood with, with pedophilia. Mm -hmm. And I was going real strong and real strong one week on my, on my mm -hmm. all of my pages and it's going strong. And this gentleman messaged me and he says, Melinda, my God, he, she, he said, I cannot stand that man. He said, but I, I did it. I went and I researched for myself and I really dove deep into the pedophilia with Hollywood. He goes, oh my God, like it just mm -hmm. opened up. He said, it just opened up and I couldn't stop. Right. And he says, and to me now it seems like the president is going to be some, you know, he's going to be a hero if this right. is able to get taken care of. He goes, this is pretty right. bad stuff. And subconsciously, he's like, we didn't want to believe that it exists because nobody wants to believe. Look, I didn't want to believe I was I voted for Obama his first term. I did it his mm -hmm. second because I didn't feel like he was doing anything. Right. And I went through the court, especially for the black community, much less right. as a whole as a president. Right. But, you know, more people are going to wake up. They're going to see yeah. things. And that's yeah. all. That's all we're here for, Patrick. Like even President Trump says, I'm just the messenger. Right. <laughs> I'm just the messenger. Right. Well, that's true. And, and one of, I mean, one of the strategies that I have used, um, especially with the black community, because a lot of them don't even know that it was the Democrat Party that actually or not the party. It was four Democrats uh, that actually created the KKK. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people don't like they are going. So I was actually in a barbershop one time standing up. I'm literally sweating under my arm, preaching in the barbershop. And, uh, That's and awesome. so I had a fact checker. I had like an 18 year old kid. I was like, everything I say, I want you to go to Google and I want you to fact check me. So I was like, you all know that it was, you know, Democrats that started the KKK. And I was like, no, it wasn't. You know, it's those racist white Republicans. I was like, fact check me. And so the guy fact checked me and was like, you know what? He's actually telling the truth. It was four Democrats. And then they'll get to the point where I say, well, the, the Democrats were different back then than the Republicans. Oh, and so well, I said, I, okay. I heard they switched parties. Yeah, there they, was a point they, in time before that that they, and I was like, okay, now I'm, I've really heard it all. Now they've switched yeah, parties just but, for that part. Yeah. Then you can go, and then this is what I did when they, when they said that. They was like, well, the party switched. And then I, I told them, I told my fact checker, I said, listen, go to Democrats.org. And I want you to go to their about section. And then I want you to go to their history section and read to me the first line. And on the first line on the on their website, it's still there today. I don't know why they haven't taken it down. Uh, but this well. line, it starts out with this. It says, for the last 200 years, we have fought for civil rights. For the last 200 years, we fought for civil rights. 
Wow. That is a blatant lie. lie. And once I can prove that, especially to black men, once I can show them, look, this is a lie. Once they realize they've been lied to, then everything starts to unravel. So and that's, that's all it takes. And that's all it takes, Patrick. You're right. Because once that, you know, they realize and it clicks and then they start looking for more truths and asking questions, like you said, and then that's it. It's like, it's unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to talk to their friends and they're going to talk right. to their family. Now, we know this isn't going to happen overnight, but there's so many people like yourself, like me, mm -hmm. like what's happening with this wonderful movement, what I'm doing with New Mexico, you know, even Latinos for Trump. I mean, there's just so much out there. And oh, wow. I like you, it. What is New Mexico? Can you tell so New Mexico? Yeah. So in New so New being from New Mexico, uh, New Mexico has been democratically held for a hundred years. Wow. Right. And we're last in everything. We're the poorest. They're supposed to be for the poor. Right. So this is the message right. I'm getting out. If they're supposed right. to be for the poor, New Mexico ranks almost last in every. We rank number 48 overall. Uh, we just ranked number 50th last, dead last in child well-being because a lot of our children live in poverty. So at wow. what point if the Democrat, you know, that's what it made me snap. We were, a lot of us are snapping. If they're supposed right. to be for the poor, then why are we the poorest? Right. And so New Mexico is New Mexicans exiting kind of like the Blexit movement, okay. the Lexit right. movement, but it's New Mexicans exiting the Democratic Party. Right. Can you imagine the change in the political dialogue if a hundred year Democratic held state turns red? Wow. And that's what we're fighting for. And that's why. Okay. Can you imagine how that would change the political dialogue going forward, right. especially after all of this mess? If a, a hundred year democratic held state turns red, that's mm -hmm. gonna say everything. And nobody that can is amazing. That is that is what we need. That is the, that's exactly what every state needs. And this mm -hmm. is why I believe grassroots is so powerful. Very people powerful. People actually on the ground, mm -hmm. actually talking to people, mm -hmm. uh changing minds, moving the needle whatever way they can. That is where it all happens. And I believe. That is what's going to win Trump this next election, because there yes. are a lot of like I've never met you before until today. But uh -huh. you're working on the ground in your state. I'm in my state working on the ground. And um, Urban Conservatives of America is bringing us all together. All together. And mm -hmm. that is what's going to make the difference in this next election. So I'm I'm excited about what you're doing. That's really cool. Oh, and I really thank like you. That. Thank you. And you know what? There are so many you know, other people like myself that are really out there um, are Cowboys for Trump. I'm sure everybody's heard of Cowboys for Trump. He got to meet the mm -hmm. president. He's from he's from New Mexico, too. So, mm -hmm. you know, like, like I tell everybody, we had to get we we were really excited that we got over a really big hurdle. And that mm -hmm. hurdle was that many people in our country never even knew that New Mexico was part of America. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wow. So now that, you know, especially when I moved to the East Coast, I was like, OK, what kind of geography did you guys learn over here <laughs> you know? yeah. in New Mexico? Because I, I got told a lot, wow, your your English sounds really good for being from there. And I'm like, oh, I don't even speak Spanish. I mean, I can, I can, I can do a mean Spanglish, yeah. you know, but <laughs> I was like, well, well I, where speak, are... I speak a little Spanish, so I, <laughs> I know like a couple of sentences. So. <laughs> So for us, and I can't tell you the countless New Mexicans that have heard the same thing. So for us, this is the first time that New Mexico's voice is really being heard. I got to do a quick segment with David Webb on his podcast. Oh, wow. show. We talked a little bit about New Mexico. Brandis Strox from the Walkaway campaign has been re he retweeted about my video that I made and about New Mexico. And they want to possibly plan a, a, virtual, a town hall with me there in New Mexico. So we're really excited that, you know, now New Mexico is getting on the map because I think for far too long, nobody really even knew how bad we were. It's like the Democrats kept us, you know, right under the radar. You know, they've been, mm -hmm. and we're so poor. And I'd love to talk about this one day. Maybe we'll have it on our show one day, but people yeah. never knew that Jeffrey Epstein has a uh, ranch in Santa Fe in New Mexico. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. See, oh, and many wow. people, it's called, it's called Zorro Ranch. And wow. go figure, open borders. And many of our, of our Navajo and our Native, we have 23 Native American tribes. I've got Native American. We all have, you know, if you're New Mexican, you're Spanish, you're Native, New Me Native American. Right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of our Native American girls and women go missing, killed, trafficked 
Wow. And people don't realize how bad it is. Wow. And so with Jeffrey Epstein, now people are like, well, what do you mean he had a ranch in New Mexico? And it's like, yeah, open borders, you know, trafficking, uh, drugs, and Jeffrey Epstein. And so now people are starting to realize, and this is what we're trying to do, is make a big noise and say, look, guys, you know, New Mexico, we were going through the same flag, uh, red flag gun laws as Virginia. You never mm -hmm. hear New Mexico on the news. Wow. You know what? Now I think about it, I haven't. Mm -mm. I haven't. Well, that's what I'm screaming really loud for, is to get, as yes. a matter of fact, an NBC reporter out of New York was supposed to fly to New Mexico to come do a story on me and all that, but it was before COVID and we had to cancel everything. So wow. in what you, it is what we need. We need to, you know, so we need to keep spreading. We need to unite. We need to show that we are stronger in numbers and we don't want to fight. We're not here to fight. We want to love you know, you guys, and we want to pray with you and we want right. to bring healing and peace to our right. country. That's right. it. And this, and this, and the movement that, that we're all a part of is actually how the, the original abolitionist movement started. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was people, they were Christian first. I can't stress that enough. When you go and you read about Frederick Douglass and you read about Harriet Tubman, or you go and watch the movie about Harriet Tubman, mm -hmm. and you see those abolitionists that were meeting in the North, uh, they believe the scriptures. They believe that our freedoms came from God and God alone. Mm -hmm. And that's why I tell people all the time when they ask me, they'll say, well, why are you voting Republican? And I'll tell them, I was like, because the Republican Party has always been the party of freedom. They yeah. were about freedom from the beginning. And they 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 were they actually started the party based on one principle, and that was we want to abolish slavery. Yes. And that print and not just, you know, for political reasons, they wanted to abolish slavery because they believe that God created man to be free. And mm -hmm. so I believe what happened then is the same thing that's happening now. And I believe with Donald Trump being elected the president, uh, he's leading a new movement of abolitionists. There are people mm -hmm. that want to abolish sex trafficking. There are people that yes. want to abolish abortion. There are people that want to abolish all of, you know, the racial uh, politicking that's going mm -hmm. on. And mm -hmm. so all of us are now starting to come together. Everything is shaking and we're coming together. And it's for a bigger cause than ourselves. And I Absolutely. think it is wonderful. I am I am so glad right now that we don't have Hillary Clinton oh, as our my. president because we would have been sold down the creek to China and Japan mm -hmm. and to Russia and everyone else. And to Russia else. and to every, everybody. But I believe God raised up Trump and, raised, and, and is raising up Republicans to be a wall for this country. So I am so glad to, you know, to see what you're doing and to see what Thank other you. conservatives are doing. Oh, it's it's amazing, and it, and and it is spreading. And I, um, whenever we talk about New Mexico, you know, I, I have my page and everything, and we have to bring the voices, and it's important for us to bring the voices and the questions and the concerns. And and mm -hmm. what I what's what I tell everybody this what I'm screaming at the if I have the platform, if I have the voice, this is not mine. It's it's the people of New Mexico. I look at my grandkids. Right. I look at my daughters, and for me what I really opened my eyes is I was watching my millennial daughters raise my grandkids and, you know, they call me and I'm like, they're going through the same stagnant issues and trying to overcome the same things that I was when I was raising right. them. There's, mm -hmm. we're stagnant. There's no right. movement. Um, yeah. The healthcare is so bad still. Um, right. You know, the jobs, especially in the rural areas where I'm from, we're really excited about USMCA. My oldest daughter got to meet Vice President Pence and because oh, wow. she was working in the oil fields and he went to my, our little small hometown in New Mexico to wow. talk about USMCA, which we're thrilled about. And so he signed a hat for my daughter. It said, make uh, Wells great again because, you know, it's the oil wow. fields. And she gave it to me. Wow. So I'm really, um, I, I wear it proudly. So I'm really <laughs> proud of my daughters. They're, at first, they were running with it. Some family members weren't happy. Yeah. And then I just kept doing what I'm doing now, planting the seeds, posting right. a different perspective, sharing a different thing and having conversations with my daughters. I never told them that they needed to think this way. 
I would just have conversations for them with them and say, well, now, you know, you're a mom. Let's really Mm -hmm. think about these things. And uh, they saw it for themselves. And it's Uh like, that's it. You know, they, they ran, you know, and they voted for him and they're going to vote for him again. Wow. And so, but they, again, they needed to see it. And as a mom, yeah. it was really hard. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, you can't, well, you have to get involved. And now that they yeah. see mommy so involved, they're really paying attention and they're calling and they're asking questions and which I'm super excited about because now they're going to raise my grandkids mm-hmm. with those values. Wow. And, and so. we have a question here for one of the viewers, uh, and you can, speaking of New Mexico, you could probably speak on this a little bit more. It says, why are Democrats for open borders? And those of you that want to ask questions, since we're like in the last 15 minutes, please send your question, yes. uh, type in your question, and we'll get to see it, and I'll ask it. So why do you think the Democrats are for like open borders? Well, we know a lot of it is control for votes. We're 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 mm-hmm. we're seeing a, an array of different reasons, um, mm-hmm. and democratically held states are the ones that have the sanctuary mm-hmm. cities. And with sanctuary cities, they were getting federal funding until this president and he put a stop to it. Right. So a lot of it is you right. know power. It's the votes. Um, I've I've spoken to people who have actually spoken to immigrants trying to come here or and and did and some of them were said you here's they, they would register them and it would be democrat and they wow. didn't understand why they needed to vote them so it was also for vote stability to make sure that they stayed in power well we're we're the party that because you're just starting we're going to take care of you you're going to get right. they get free money they get right. free it's- everything and, so, the, and the thing that's amazing, I believe it was like 26 percent of the Hispanic vote actually went to Trump yes. this last time. Twenty six percent. That was staggering. That's more than the black community. We were sitting at eight percent. Well, so it's we going to be more than that this year. Yeah, we're yeah, we are working on it and we are hoping to get there. But I mean, like you said, what they're seeing, they're seeing um a group of people that's moving into the middle class that's starting to question things that's starting to realize like oh you want to raise my taxes again and so now that we're starting to to ask those questions they're looking for a new base and like you said that's why i believe that democrats are for open borders is because they want to create a new base uh that that they can have voter stability so yeah i believe you're perfectly uh right on that that's exactly what, it, and and many, you know, the black conservative, uh, the black conservatives that we are watching now, that go and sit with the president. And what I tell people before this, you saw Beyonce, you saw Jay Z, you saw the celebrities. I say, but if you look at our president, President Trump, he doesn't have them. He's bringing in those that were freed from prison, the black men that have come out and are mm-hmm. a part of the Second Chance Act, the Hispanic community. It is regular, everyday people like us, yes. like Bill yes. Gates that started the Lexit. It, pe- people like us that, you know, he cares about hearing from what we need, what we're doing, what you know, mm-hmm. what's important to us, not mm-hmm. to celebrities, because obviously right. you know, they're out there. But and and so for I appreciate that, you know, he'd mm-hmm. rather have the everyday, just normal American in there versus right. the celebrities. And I, mean, I, I didn't I didn't know. I actually got a chance to meet the president um, actually this year on February 27th I was oh, actually awesome. at the White House and got a chance to pray with him and everything. Oh, and so I God never God. thought in a million years that little old me would be able to meet the president and you know around here people think i'm the only person in my city that a black person in the city that voted for trump but that shows you something that shows you that and when i got in the room i looked around and i noticed that we were all like we're we we're not rich we're we're just working people that you know he brought to the white house and then the first thing he said when he stood at the podium he let us know he said you all deserve to be here because your ancestors helped build this house. And when he said that you can feel something just break in the atmosphere, because none of us, I mean, it was people that was with me that brought pictures of their great grandparents and their grandparents just to take their take their picture of the picture in the White House. Right. And so it, it was freeing for us. We wasn't there because we we're celebrities. We were no. there because we were normal American people that was courageous enough to support this president yeah. and to pray for him. 
And so right. I was just blown away by that. And, um, you know, That's I pray that he, continues, that he continues to do that. He doesn't have a whole bunch of rappers up there, not a whole bunch no. of Hollywood people but a regular Americans that really appreciate him. And that's my dream, you know, and, and, and our president spotlighted New Mexico. He mm. saw that we are a state that the forgotten state that's really underwater and has, you know, we have so many flaws. We have so many problems. Mm. And he highlighted us. He gave us a name. And, you know, here's New Mexico. Look at they're They're not doing well. And so... I, you know, God bless you. That was just, what an honor that you got to meet him. I, I pray yeah, and I yeah. hope one day I get, to, I just want to give him a hug and thank him. Yeah, Literally yeah. just thank him. Um, but before I forget, there was a question up. And if we felt that open borders are for the wealthy or are they for the poor? Okay. And um, what do you think on that question? Well, uh, when you look at open borders and the people that come uh, to America through the border, they are actually taking jobs away from the poor or the people that would normally, you know, work those jobs. And so it's actually affecting the black community more than anything. That's why I cannot understand for the life of me why black people are still supporting the Democrat Party as they support open borders. Because, because they, they don't those, see it. They, it yeah, exactly those don't in, see it entry that. level jobs that our teenagers are taking or that our teenagers would normally work, those jobs are being taken by these illegal immigrants. And so and then you have some wealthy people that are using it as well, but it's all affecting the poor. That's why it should be a major pushback in the Democrat party from especially minority and, and black people to say, hey, you, we need to rethink this policy. That's absolutely right. You are absolutely right. And, and, and I think when more minorities see it in that perspective, and that's and that's just the point we have to get to again plant the seeds show them the different perspective look we're not here to fight we're just here to have a conversation we're just here to show yeah. you a different side of it you know let's mm -hmm. let's have a conversation and i remember somebody said we we were we were raised we didn't talk politics or religion maybe that right. was a problem maybe right. that's why we should because look it, I, we don't know how I and say um, all the time, i say all the time the reason i mix my religion and my politics is because Politics keep mixing into my religion and, and interfering with my religion. And so I think it's important that people of faith are able to talk politics. I believe Absolutely. it's so important. That's a whole nother show in and of itself. Uh, oh, Patrick, I'm sure we're going to have a ton of, of uh, topics. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to have fun on Sundays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have so much to talk about. And, um, I, I'm so excited. I, I I absolutely love this, and I we can do a big shout out to John, uh, Mr. McCullough, and his wife, and yeah. and Marvina and everybody, and Sean. I mean, all of you guys for um, bringing us on and, and making this because what a you know beautiful concept, but to unite everybody, and right. so we so we can really show and uh, this country how united we really are and how we ha we we have the same message. We have right. the same values. We have the same meaning. We feel the same way. And um, I always tell people that maybe oppose this president or are mad. Why don't you sit down with one of us? Just sit right. down with us and ask us, what is it about this man that you support? I said, right. you would be surprised, right. but some of them are so angry. I don't care. You're stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, and it's sorry. like, I mean, well, and that's the thing. It's like any conversation that happened outside of media talking points, like you can ask someone, like, why do you hate Donald Trump? And a lot of them can't tell you. They say, like, well, because he's racist. I was like, OK, well, what did he do uh, that was racist? What has he done? And they can't tell you. Well, to, you know, for they me, don't... they say that he called Mexican murderers, drug dealers and rapists. And that is not, and that is not what happened in that, so let's, in that situation. Let's clear the air. OK, because here's the perspective. He did not say that Mexicans were were rapists and murderers and drug dealers. He said Mexico allows their murderers. Mexico allows their rapists to come in. Murderers allow. And you know what? Like I tell people, he, he's he's correct. They're called right. you know this nice little group. They're called the cartels, and right. um, <laughs> they do run amok in and out of our country, and especially throughout my state. And a lot of people are very scared. There's, right. That's, that's the thing about New Mexico. Right. They're terrified of these people. Okay. Mm. They are terrified. Uh -huh. 
And so we've got a lot more deeper issues than others right. really understand. And, and, and you know what? Mexico's government was corrupt. Our government was just as corrupt. And right. for uh, the right price, the cartels could walk in and out. They're the drug right. dealers, they're the murderers, and they're the rapists. And they're right. doing just that. And they're, and because we have corrupt governments on both sides of the border, what he was saying are facts. They mm -hmm. do. And and because we are, our, our uh, immigration laws are so porous, mm -hmm. um, they abuse them. There are so many right. loopholes and they wow. abuse them. And it hurts even people like myself who live on the border Southern New Mexico, the majority of us, we're, it's red. It's conservative. Go figure, the border towns are very conservative and we want a border wall. And so right. I tell people, do you want to know why? Do you care to know why maybe we feel this way? Right. Some do and some just, they, they're just so angry and just so enraged with ang you know, just emotional anger right. that they, they don't care to hear anything any other in anything well, at all. that's and, and that's why we're doing this is because we want to make sure that we are able to give people the facts and give people a different perspective yes. when you look at um you know all the things that's going on in this nation um our nation needs prayer our nation mm -hmm. needs the truth our nation needs people like you and myself to be able to sit down and break things down for them so uh we only have a few minutes left and so yes. i want to encourage everyone uh, to go and or actually first to share this if you have the opportunity if you're watching us right now and You see the share button just share it and someone may yeah. watch it later uh, to get some facts and then to go to the um, To the website and go to our Facebook page at urban conservatives of America and like our Facebook page Because we're gonna have a lot of shows like this yeah. that's happening on Sundays Wednesdays Thursdays It's different people from all over that's going to be doing this and so I just want to thank everyone for joining us. I want you to remember what a conservative is. I want you to remember these four things. One, we respect God and we respect the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Two, we respect life. We believe that abortion is murder. And we believe that uh, God um, values all life, no matter the culture, the background, the age, or anything. Three, we believe in limited government. The government should not control our lives, but they have a limited role um to in order to help us as americans and then number four we believe in personal responsibility mm -hmm. we don't we don't blame the white man we don't blame the mexican we don't blame the hispanics nope. we don't blame the black man but what we do is take personal responsibility for our own actions and that's, that's what it means to be a conservative do you have anything melinda oh you covered it beautifully and um, also with uh, our YouTube, we have the YouTube um, Urban, yes. Urban Conservatives of America as well, just like Patrick mm -hmm. said, so with the YouTube and the Facebook. And don't forget, Patrick and I get to come on here on Sundays and share some insight with you guys. We really hope it helps. Um, share it with everybody, like he said, that you know. Um, and just, you know, we have to learn and conservatives need to show the way um, of understanding and to mm -hmm. try to go into conversations knowing that um, we have to love one another, we have to be kind. And right. but let's let's really try to plant the seed and share the good things. And can you always keep preaching? We want to be happy. We don't want to live that we're consistently living in death and destruction because right. to date we haven't seen it. So right. we can't wait to share more with with you guys. And that's the only way when we come to share and plant the seed, you share it so that mm -hmm. it plants the seed because you never know who's listening. A lot of people on pages probably that don't have the same values or understand, you think that they're not listening because they hate the man. I promise you, sometimes you planting that seed, essentially they're going to be like, wow, I that's so true. I never thought of it that way. And right. then there we go. We're opening up conversations. So tune right. in with us again. They have more shows, I believe, Mondays, Tuesdays. So go on there. We have shows every night. We're going to be here on Sundays. Um, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, so on and so forth. And we cannot wait until these all have, share all these awesome people, cool discussions. Can you tell people where they can find you on social yeah, media? Absolutely. So I'm um, New Mexic group page on Facebook, me, Melinda Ann Rivera, and my IG is the same, and my Twitter, Melinda Ann Rivera. And I post all of that New Mexic. I'm so 
thankful to fellow Americans and everybody for, you know, the support. New Mexicans are absolutely thrilled. We can't thank you enough. What about you, Patrick? And you can, fi and you can find me at Patrick D. Hampton on all social media platforms. And you can also find me at The Patrick Perspective. So thank you all for, for listening. And we enjoyed you today. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. God bless you all.